Hi. Um, I'm thrilled to be here, and I uh, study high school students like you. About seven years after teaching as a high school English teacher, I decided to see what life was like on the other side of the desk, and so I decided to shadow high school students for a year. So what that meant was that I literally went and met a high school student at 7.30 in the morning, went to all of their classes, ate lunch with them, went and interviewed them um, after school, watched some of their after school activities, and then they would go home and do homework, I would go home and type up field notes. And I did that every day from September through June with five different students. And the five students helped me write the book, Doing School. And so what I'm going to talk about today is what doing school means and how you can undo school. And I want to introduce you. Do I point it there? How do we get this? Next slide. I'm pushing the thing. <laughs> We can just push it on the computer. Yeah. yeah. Can you be my, or Tremaine, either one? Yeah. OK. These are going to go fast, though. Uh, so uh, one student who I write about who helped me write the book is named Kevin. And maybe you can relate to Kevin. Kevin carries a calculator around with him. And he calculates and recalculates his GPA. And he can tell at any time of day exactly what GPA he has. Right? I know you have power school at some of your schools. You can go online and check, check your GPA. This was before power school. And he had a lot of pressure from his dad. His dad went to the University of California at Berkeley School of Engineering, and he absolutely wanted Kevin to go to the University of California, Cal Berkeley School of Engineering. Uh, never mind that Kevin wasn't even interested in engineering. But he had a lot of pressure from dad because going to a four-year college of the caliber of Berkeley, according to dad, would make Kevin a huge success in life. So Kevin was feeling a lot of pressure. He had a B plus average, which everybody told him was not enough to get into Berkeley. He was told by his dad that he had to practice and practice and practice taking the SATs. He had flashcards. He had software programs. He had a lot of pressure on him. And he could not get this B plus grade up. And he felt like he was trying as hard as he could. And at one point, he actually had what he called a breakdown in school. And he kicked a hole in the gymnasium wall because he was so frustrated that he had this B plus. And he said, I revel in my mediocrity. But he really didn't revel in his mediocrity. He really wanted to do better. And he couldn't figure out how. And he couldn't figure out how to get out of this system that was push putting so much unhealthy pressure on him. Another student is named Teresa. She was a first uh, generation Latina student. And she, no one else in her family had gone to college. She had a whole different kind of stress in that she had to work 40 hours a week after school in order to help put money on the table for her family. So here she is having all sorts of homework, all sorts of um, very intense classes, and then going to a gas station and trying to fit in doing her homework while she's holding down a job. At the same time, at home, she was really the only person in her family who spoke English well enough, so she had to be the translator. So she would miss school. Uh, frequently to take relatives to the doctor. She would um, not be able to study for a math test because she was having to haggle over the rent check with the landlord. So her stress was completely different from Kevin's and completely real. Um, she was worried not only you know, what college could she get into with her GPA, but how was she going to even pay for something like the SAT. SAT prep classes were out of the question for her. At least that's what she thought. How was she going to even pay for her college admission? Um, so both kids, lots of stress. Here's a quote from Kevin when I asked him, so why are you doing this? You know, what are you learning in school? He basically said, look, people don't go to school to learn. They go to get good grades, which brings them to college, which brings them the high paying job, which brings them the happiness, or so they think. And over and over again, I kept hearing this from all sorts of students. We can't learn. We don't have time to learn. School's not set up for learning. It's about the system getting through, getting the grades, all for this holy grail called college. So was this just five kids in Silicon Valley? I wanted to find out. So I surveyed 7,000 students. And we looked at 22 different high achieving middle schools and high schools, public and private. And this is what we found. The kids who were doing over three and a half hours of homework, and that was 30% of our sample, 
were more likely to show severe mental and physical health issues. The average 7,000 students, 22 different schools, was about three hours of homework a night. So what I'm saying today is how much homework is too much? How can you look at your schedule and figure out the way you spend your day and how to balance that? We also looked at how many extracurricular activities these kids were doing outside of school. And that average for high school was about 10 hours a week, Monday through Friday. But our range, there were some kids who were doing zero extracurricular activities. There were some kids who were doing zero homework. But there were also <laughs> kids at the other end of the range who were doing four, uh, 40 hours of extracurricular activity a week, Monday through Friday. We weren't counting Saturdays or Sundays. So if your extracurricular activities have turned into almost a full-time job, um, if your homework has turned into over three and a half hours a night, you're probably not getting the sleep that you need. So if you look at this chart, the recommended hours of sleep that every high school kid is supposed to get is over nine hours. It's nine and a half hours of sleep a night. I know how impossible that is. I have a high school student, right? But if you look at our averages at high school, these guys aren't even getting close to seven hours a night, and about 30% of our sample is getting less than six hours of sleep a night. When you're on less than six hours of sleep a night, you shouldn't be driving a car. It's as if you're legally drunk. You certainly can't focus on what you're doing. Your short-term memory, long-term memory are affected, right? Sleep deprivation is not healthy. When you're exhausted, you cut corners. If you're Kevin, you cheat. 95% of our sample admitted to cheating at least one time the previous year. Okay, there's lots of different ways to cheat. You can copy homework, you can copy from someone off a test, you can use an illegal cheat sheet. 95% of our sample cheated last year. Oh, we now have a clicker. Which button? Big? Yay. Okay, what does this mean? Why are they doing it? To get the grades, to take the tests, to get into college, and they are stressed. Over 50% of our sample said that they faced unhealthy stress on a daily basis. So what are we supposed to do about this? This is where we come in. I started an organization called Challenge Success, which challenges this very narrow notion of success, that you have to get the grades, get the test scores, go to college, the best college, to become a success. Right? We just heard from our previous speaker that that's not necessarily the path. We are about a much broader path to success. We want to challenge the system that says that you have to take those steps to success. Real success is when you're healthy, when you're engaged with learning, when you are a person who has character. You can look yourself in the mirror every day and know that you're ethical. You are the most authentic you that you can be. So I'm asking you to respectfully challenge the system that says there's one path to success and we're all on this treadmill to get there. I'm asking you to respectfully challenge your teachers. We work with schools and we want you to start working with your school to say, we want to learn in the most authentic way possible. We want the learning to be relevant and useful and engaging. We are not about filling in bubbles, spitting back, and regurgitating information because we can look stuff up on the internet that can't be memorized. Instead, we want to be critical thinkers who can solve global problems in an interdisciplinary way. We want to think outside the box, not inside the bubble. And respectfully, I want you to challenge your parents who are holding you to these standards that are literally impossible. They are parenting many times out of great love for you, but also out of fear that if you don't follow the narrow path to success, you, their wonderful child who they love so dearly is not going to be a success. And you have to point out other models and tell them when you're working as hard as you can. You need time for play. You need time for downtime. You need time for family. You need what we call PDF, playtime, downtime, family time, every day. Play may look like Facebook time. That's fine. Play may be social. But you cannot become little robots going through the day without a life, and your family has to understand that. At the same time, you have to find legitimate time to challenge yourself and think deeply. And finally, I want you to challenge yourself. Many of you are doing things in the name of grades and test scores and passing the high school exit exams, etc., that are just not healthy. You have one body. That body has to last you a lifetime. Think of what you're doing to your body today and ask yourself, what are the positive changes that I can do to change my habits? We want positive coping um, strategies towards stress. 
if you are exercising, if you are eating healthy, if you are sleeping, if you are doing things to lower the stress that are healthy, meditation, yoga, whatever it is that works for you, instead of wasting your body on the uh, unhealthy coping strategies like stimulants, drug use, um, cutting yourself, etc. And we also want you to be aware of your friends and encourage them to be healthy as well and look for signs of depression and anxiety and suicide ideation. We need the whole community to be working together as a group towards health and well-being. And so I want to end with a, a little mantra uh, that I want you to think about in your own life. Time for play, time for downtime, time for family. If you walk this walk, if you strive to be the best that you can be and challenge yourself to learn really authentically, to learn uh, in a way that gets you excited, that's real, that's relevant to your life, um, not only will you get into the right fit college for you, that's almost a given, but you will also be set up for real success. Uh, don't just do school or do life. Undo them and thrive. Thank you.